service dog love in the hospital. Oh, I love this little black spot. Thank you, Mr. Mean. Thank you. I'm getting in between the fingers too. So handsome, so handsome. Oh, my God, what's he? What's he? Hospital with Sir's dog. So much better. So much better. He was. Right, 99.2. Okay. Trying to stay down. And um, the phosphate is done. Yeah. So that it's going to be the plan. There's so many. There's phosphate left. What's uh, the med though? Oh, this is, this is Vancomycin. So they are um, the Vanco Josin. Yeah, okay. Vanco and Josin together. We okay. checked the pharmacist with together. Yeah, I heard they said know. they are, yeah, it is compatible. Okay. So we can run it through there. When um, those are finished, then we're going to start with the TP and leave it on time. That's okay. why we are doing Perfect. Right? Okay. Just more. So it's more and it's in more fluid that more, you're giving. What? More, more tobacco is okay. a higher dose. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All you can do is take two for you if you want. Time to feed Simon in the hospital. Oh. Thank you so much, Roman. Was he even more up? Love you. Yeah, my mama said love you. Love you. She said love you. Oh, you excited? So this is how we feed Simon when we're in the hospital. Decided we're finally gonna make this into a video because I gotta be here, might as well get content out of it. So yeah, we just pour a little water in his food, make it easier to digest. We give it to him in two parts because this bowl is really, it's small, so. And he gets a cup and a half of food. All right, Simon, sit. Thank you. Okay. All right. Do you want me to put the rail down so um, you can reach or? Yeah. All right, Simon, it's gonna be scary. I know, I know, so scary. Thank you. Right. Wait. Watch me. Okay. This is how we feed him in the hospital. And then to take one to the bathroom, either Autumn or my mom just takes him in his gear out to a doggy potty spot. So he can do his business. Uh, he peed and pooped when I took him out earlier, good. so he'll probably just have to pee before going to bed. Yeah. If it passed an hour, he might poop. Sometimes he poops three hours a day. Sometimes he doesn't. He has a more regular schedule than we do. Yeah. That <laughs> he got that right. I pooped today for the first time in three weeks. You're knocking it over, you're pushing it under the bed. Let me help. I know this looks a little weird. That's good, it's getting me to slow down. We've gotta get out of pizza. Okay, how about this? 
I'll pour out the last few pieces of cake. Yep, yep. Hey, Sai, si, there's only one piece left. There you go. Clean mm -hmm. it up. And then we do the second portion, which is the exact same. One, two. <laughs> oh yeah, look at you already mm -hmm. prepped. Yeah, good boy. He knows. He knows. Round two, buddy, you ready? Watch me. Let's see. Oh, okay. Come on. He's done so well. I've been really, really impressed with how he's done being it, it being his first hospital lives. First time in a hospital. And being so short being home. Like he's only yeah, been he's with us. been home for a few days. So now I gotta wash my hands. <laughs> oh, are you happy? You guys are junior. Oh, he said I said again. Good boy. Hey, you want some water? Go ahead. Good boy. The dribbles. The dribbles. My mom brought this little doggy mat and he actually really likes it. So, you want any more? Are you all good? It's like, we're all good. Good time, bro. <laughs> Get in my baby. Get in my baby. It's cuddle time. Yeah, bud. Come away. Yeah, there you go. There you go. He's all happy. He's got dinner watching Never Before Christmas. I have a slew of medications on board. I have Tylenol, Benadryl, Ativan, Zofran, Toradol, all these antibiotics. I have a nausea patch behind my ear. I have my pain patch. Whew. But we're vlogging. Yay. I think this is going to be a good video because I think it'll be cool for you guys to see what it's like having a service dog in the hospital. And just us specifically, since we just literally days ago came home from training. Talk about a first outing, huh? Like, wow. This is, sorry, I threw you in deep, but <laughs> just threw you in the deep, but I love you, too, and you do is so good. So good. Were this question not like how are you doing how are you holding up considering your entire life <laughs> specifically right now you're in the hospital yeah um i mean honestly it's, it does suck but it's so much nicer having simon here and autumn and my mom and Aww. so they've all really helped a lot so oh that's been really helpful but what I'm dealing with specifically right now, like literally some form of bloodstream infection, it's kicking my ass. It is kicking Wonder, like, my I've ass. I've never, like I honestly would have never even thought, every time you like kind of catch a break or like you kind of man like figure out how to manage a new diagnosis, another one is just like, hey, we're not done yet. Literally, I was like, I'm bringing my home, my dog home, like my, I finally am a service dog. I can take on the world. <laughs> it takes me right yeah. back to the hospital. And it's like, well, let's try it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. How is he doing in the hospital? I'm so glad we got there. He's Listen, doing I mean, really as you good. Know, like, healthcare systems suck. And yeah. I don't know if Autumn told you what I was talking to her about earlier. We'll get there. Well, but, you, you um, will. He was really well behaved, so he didn't have a problem. There's gonna be kinks, there's gonna be things that come up that we have to adjust and work around. Like, he's still under two years old, so he's not gonna be perfect, but he's a really good dog. And especially in the hospital, we've had a, a bunch of nurses like start petting him and stuff because he's not used to it. He's not used to people like petting right. him. But it's important, especially in these settings like hospitals and ambulances yeah. and like anyone who's wearing a uniform who's a first responder needs to have a relationship with him so we're going to be yes. doing lots of training around fire stations but everyone loved him like everyone was like oh my god he's so even the people in the waiting room were like oh he's so cute which oh. it was nice that it got to put smiles on other people's faces too i literally slept for like two three days i like couldn't even exist and i didn't even realize that i had a fever i had chills i could not walk 
Like, it was horrible. They've had me on antibiotics constantly because we're trying to kill whatever it is in my bloodstream. But we're still waiting on some blood cultures to come back to figure out exactly what it is that we need to be fighting. Uh, I can't wait to meet your good boy. I know, I can't wait for you to meet him too. Oh my gosh. He's so handsome. That's the number one comment I get. He's so beautiful. He's so handsome. Yeah. Like, he, uh, I birthed him. He's my baby. <laughs> yeah, you did like pro. Cool. How long is my TBN gonna go for? It is. It says a 24 hour. Okay, so they're putting me on 24 hour feeds yeah. right now. So we we'll go okay, to. Okay. I haven't been on 24 hour feeds yeah. forever. Around one o'clock, she's piped up um, temperature-wise. Otherwise, she's okay. Um, the she has two um, two um, lumens for the peak, uh, peak line. Mm -hmm. One for men, one for TPN. We have TPN running, and she has a couple antibiotics. So that's really wrong. Consequences. Consequences. Children are expecting you, so please. Come to your senses. You're joking. You're joking. I can't believe my. Morning. A little after 5 30. Just had to use the restroom. They just gave me my Zofran. The Benadryl and Ativan. Um, these are my antibiotics that I've been hanging all night. And this is my TBN, which they did put me on 24 hour feeds. Autumn took Simon to go potty and do his business. And then he packs. Just hoping we'll actually hear results of this, these cultures today. Which cross that, yeah. It's like you could end up in the ACU if we don't take it out. <laughs> I'm literally living in my worst nightmare. <laughs> he thinks it's a yeast infection in my bloodstream. And he's like, we can do tests and wait two days, but in two days you can be in the ICU. So we need to take it out. And I asked the one can I was like, when he, I need a new one. I, I can't live without one. And he was like, well, we can't put another one in right away. If you still have the bacteria, so that's like two, three days that I'm going to have to go without nutrition. I'm going to have to deal with IVs. would never work on me. They already tried three IVs on me in the ER. And none of them worked. The one that stayed in blue the first time they tried to use it. And that's just three days of that. Still have to get another one put in. <laughs> My fever's 
aren't going down. Every time it goes down, it just goes back up. And I'm just, I'm so tired. And of course, Simon isn't here right now because he's with my mom getting exercise. <laughs> and mm, I'm so upset. And I'm so scared. <laughs> Sit down and pull it out, okay? Let's take some deep breath out right there. Ready? One, two, and three. That's all. It's gonna keep the flying pressure looking for the tip that's in there. Yep. How long has it been there? The pig? Yeah. For two years. When the last time it was changed. I think it's in there today. So, yeah. Hey everyone. So I've been here for three days now. Um, yesterday was a really hard day because they had to pull my pick line. Pretty positive that I had a yeast infection that was in my bloodstream, especially since I have a history of like fungal infections and stuff, which is why I've been on meds 24/7. Um, but since I didn't have my pig line and I still have such, so many meds and stuff I need to take, you put in this IV, which it's called a long IV. Um, I hate it. It's so uncomfortable. I, can, I can't move my arm without it hurting. And like, I'm literally making me miss my pig line because I can't feel it at all. So, um, so I gotta wait two days because we want to make sure we kill the bacteria in my bloodstream before I put another line in. Simon, yeah. sit. Good boy. Wait. Watch me. Hey. Watch me. Okay. Go ahead. This room is so much bigger than the other one we were in initially. It is dark. Inside. I'm getting mama cuddles right now. Finally pumped with meds. Feeling a little better. And Mr. Simon's over there. So yeah, they took my pick line out. So I have a temporary IV in my arm right now. It's a long IV. I hate it. It hurts every time I move my hand and every medication that gets put into it burns. So. Can you put him up? You want him up? Yeah. Come in, load up. There we go. Mm -hmm. There. Come on. All right, what are we doing here? Come on. So we could put him up. fever keeps going up and down it, it was at 104 in the very beginning and then it was 103 in the er for the first time and then it was 103 for hours in the er until i finally got it down and then when the fever broke it went to 98 then no, that night it went back up to 102 something and took more meds and i think we got it broke that night again mm -hmm. and it went down to 99 100. then it went to 100 and uh, it's just i keep spiking up cuddle 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 with my service dog mm -hmm. it definitely makes a huge difference having him here with me he's been alerting to my high heart, high heart rates uh, and then we've been telling the nurses about it because sometimes I'll see him standing and like staring at me. They'll be like, wait, what is he doing? So I'm like, he's alerting. <laughs> my heart rate's high. So I'm so thankful for him. He's done really good for this being his first time in the hospital. He's doing amazing. I'm really proud of him. 
Yeah, I got it. I can push it extra slow. I don't, I don't think. It wanted to kind of jump regardless. Yeah, my heart okay. does funky things all the time. Well, I was feeling the palpitations, but it was right after the mid win, and then I checked, and it was like 69, and then it was. Is that 116 now? 116. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, story of my life. <laughs> you can check it out. Sorry. Too many things at once. Okay. How about belly pain? How much belly pain are you having today? Um, some. It's still. Kind still of up in that area? Yeah. Well, today's going to be if something grows today and something's positive, then we have a quick answer. Um, okay. Really, this is going to be. The question at 48 hours, are the cultures from yesterday negative at 48 hours? If they're negative at 48 hours, and we put in a line. And I mean, assuming this year also, the fevers have gone. And we're also waiting for the blood tests um, for any evidence of yeast infection. 48 hours is going to be um, Wednesday right. evening. Right. And that means Thursday morning is we'll you know be able to put in a line and um, arrange for that kind of stuff and just see. And hopefully we have answers tomorrow too. I mean, I, I'm not pulling this line because I'm just pulling the line. I'm pulling the line because I'm worried that it's infected. And I'm really waiting to see if we have evidence for to support a yeast infection. Um, because we have gone treatment for that too. So we're just kind of waiting a little bit. So I think that today is going to be just a day of sitting around making sure that nothing happens. <laughs> following the fever curve just for interest. And tomorrow is when we're going to have legitimate stuff coming back. <laughs> He's well behaved. Oh, look at his eyes. He's got sweet eyes. He does have sweet eyes. Oh, look. I did not. What's his name? Simon. 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 Yeah, he's my cardiac and seizure alert dog. Um, and he helps me with mobility too. So I suspect probably the reason why is stress can also provoke it, but then also if you're finding an infection, which I know they're, they're, they're treating you with, it lowers the seizure threshold. And it's not uncommon that we see breakthrough seizure in the setting of infection. Um, what we sometimes do in this case is either bump up your Keppra to 2,000 milligrams twice a day, and then we can lower it once they get you off of your anti-seizure method, uh, sorry, off of the antibiotic. Because it sounds like in general, 1,500 works for you, but because you're most likely finding this infection, I know they're still sorting out, that can lower the seizure threshold. But I think my plan for you will probably be to go up on the Kepra for a little bit until they, they get you off antibiotics, and at least give you a extra protection, okay? okay. I went to go pee and he took my spot. <laughs> he was right, right down there, come out of the bathroom. I told you why you were getting an echo? Not really. So you've got an infection going on. I don't know what the infection is, but it looks like you've got some sort of infection. Whatever the bacteria is, it can travel to your heart and attach to your valves. It doesn't mean it's going to, it's just that it can. Right. So this is more of just kind of a... Precaution. Exactly. Oh, 
fever. Yay. Thank you. Celebrate. I don't even know how long those are going to be. It's literally like four good. days of 100 degree fevers. Uh, it was like, no wonder I couldn't walk. Yeah. I still am wobbly. Yeah. Ready? Wait. Wait. Watch me. So we just got the good news that after two long days of dealing with this stupid long line, which is the most painful IV I've ever had, stings when you put any single medication into it, every single time you put medication into it, and you can't draw labs with it, so I had to get stuck at least 10 times while I was here. Um, it's finally coming to an end because I am getting my pick line this morning. All of my cultures came back negative. I think I got rid of the, what's it called? Infection in my bloodstream. Um, what was it called? It was, so I tested positive for Staphylococcus aureus, gram positive cocoa, cookie, in clusters. I don't, know, I don't know what it means. <laughs> it's a bacteria in my blood that that's why i was having the 104 103 degree fevers for days it took us days to get it down but once we took my pick line out it got a lot better um i still feel like horrible i'm it's gonna take me a long time to recover but i got laid off so i don't have a job right now <laughs> so i i will have time to recover and we're getting out today they said now they're gonna be trying to place the pick around 9.30. So it should be very soon and then they're gonna try to discharge me, so. Shake it off, I suppose, shake it off. We're doing vitals. I just got my Ativan to relax me for the procedure, because the procedure sucks. I'm gonna see if we can get any footage. I might try to have my mom get a little bit. We won't be able to do much it's a sterile field so it's all gonna be covered anyway um so we'll figure out what we can but we're just doing the final vitals check before they put the new one in this man's over there <laughs> i'm here to face the midline okay. my name is Aldo on the right arm um and connie gave you your your love medicine Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, like. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll send a picture to the chart. So Look at that. See. That's so cool. She's trying to just get her. I know I'm not supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. Give me a moment for your skin. I want to make sure. So I clean with the. Alright, one more. 